So if we're going to alter for a broad back, that means that right here between the shoulder blades, we don't have enough space. And when you're wearing an item, not, not a knit item with stretch because you're not going to get a true reading. But if we're looking at this, we are going to see horizontal, I mean vertical wrinkles right around the arm thighs that are running this way. I'm a liar. What the heck? It's been a long day. Can you believe that? You're going to get right here in your arm thighs, you're going to get horizontal wrinkles that kind of radiate out from the arm thigh in the back. You're not gonna get them in the front. You're just gonna get them in the back. So they're gonna be about right here. And it's just gonna be strain and wrinkles and they're gonna be horizontal. And that's gonna tell you that right there we need a little bit extra fabric. So using one of our backs, we can't, this is gonna be just a little bit of theory and some arbitrary spaces because you have not done body measurements yet. And so you don't actually know how far from your neck down the center back is the widest part of your back yet. You don't know that. So we can make some assumptions based on this pattern piece. We know we have a shaping dart that comes down from the shoulder and the apex of the dart is right here in this circle on that point. And we have a dart coming up from the waist for shaping and it has an apex point at this circle. And somewhere between these two points, is gonna be the shoulder blade. So we're just gonna make an educated guess that the shoulder blade is right there, okay? Now, if you think about your body proportionately, that's about halfway down the arm's eye from the shoulder. So if you're looking at your back, halfway down your arm's eye from your shoulder, that's about where my shoulder blade is. Can you see how that assumption works? It may not be exact, but it'll be good enough for theory. So we need to make a mark to slash this open and add some space right here in this area. So we're gonna use our ruler and we're gonna make a line parallel to the center back. And we're gonna go from the waistline all the way up to about an inch from the shoulder. And then we're gonna draw a diagonal line over to the corner. What we don't want is we don't wanna interfere with the arm's eye. We don't wanna interfere with the dart. We just don't want to leave. We don't want to mess with those two things. So make your line be somewhere in between. Once again, parallel to the center front. We're going to draw up. We get about an inch from the edge. And we just draw a diagonal line over to the corner. Can you see that? That glare is really bad. That glare helps. I mean, did that take care of the glare? Or is it just me? Did it make it better? Okay. Okay, so you can see my line is coming all the way up from the waistline over to the corner where the shoulder seam and the arm's eye are gonna intersect. <clears throat> Does anybody know why they call it an arm's eye? I don't know either. And it's spelled really stupid. So it's spelled arm scythe, like a scythe mm -hmm. that you cut wheat with. Yeah, so A-R-M-S-C-Y-E, arms, sigh, arms, eye. weird. Now we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut all the way up this line and all the way to this corner, but right here at this corner, this intersection, I need your paper to stay attached. I need a pivot point right there. Now, if you cut up this line into here, your paper is not going to pivot. You also need to cut in your seam allowance from here so that your paper is just attached at seam line. That's it. Then right here where our shoulder seam would be, we're going to make a cut over to the arm's eye. Once again, I need a pivot. So I'm gonna cut two but not through the cut line or the seam line and two but not through the seam line. And this whole piece of paper is gonna shift and pivot off to the side. Now, after all the work you did tracing these, this becomes painful. Please don't let the tip of your scissors extend beyond your line or you'll accidentally cut through it. It happens every time. What happens if you cut through your paper? Tape dispensers are in the back drawer. You're gonna need those. 
Okay. Now, as you can see, I've cut this apart and my paper pivots and shifts right here where this slit mark is. I need my paper to stick out a quarter of an inch. I need there to be a gap between my paper, a quarter of an inch. I need my paper here to lay flat and even because we're still working with flat pattern, not three dimensional paper. We don't add three dimension until we start shaping the fabric, but our paper needs to be flat. So I would get tissue paper and I'd fill in the hole behind. I would make sure I measure my gap. Oops. And I would put a tiny piece of tape holding the top piece in place. Then remember how I said we're making these movements in isolation. We are not adding that quarter of an inch all the rest of the way down the back. We don't need it down the back. We only need it at the shoulder blades, which means at the bottom, the waist of this piece, this needs to be back to original. Okay. Now, because we've just taken this piece of paper and kilted it off to the side and then had it come back as an angle, it is not going to line up exactly down here at the bottom. So your tissue paper filler needs to come out to what the original line was over here that didn't move. And then after it's taped in place, you're going to refold this start and you're going to reshape your waistline and reshape your seam line, your cut line and your seam line from original point to original point, an original seam line to original seam line. Does that make sense? Okay. Go ahead.